Flies, I hate flies, I hate insects. Except when they're super huge. Remember when Jeff Goldblum accidentally turned himself into a giant blue bottle? Great movie! His girlfriend was understandably upset. Sadly, becoming a giant insect is an occupational hazard for scientists like me. Of course, horror movies like this are just works of fiction. Or are they? We all know about the age of super huge dinosaurs. Less well known is another time where God forgot. The age of super huge insect. Don't believe me? Let's take a trip on my time machine. I've gone back in time 350 million years and this is the time before even the age of the dinosaur. And what's this heading my way? It's a giant alien insect. The jungle floor is alive, crawling with insects of size 2 meter long and half a meter wide. Here is a scorpion the size of a large dog, giant flying birds the size of a huge bird and mega fleas with beaks like the hypodermic syringe needles. It's Horro Central. How come these bugs are so super huge? Geologists call this period Carboniferous. The answer is in the title. The carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere are through the roof here. On average, between one and a half and two thousand parts per million. If you took a million molecules of the atmosphere, about two thousand of them are carbon dioxide. Doesn't sound much, but it's five times or 500 percent larger than today all that horrible carbon dioxide pollution it must have been hell right wrong have you ever been to a jungle well this place is like super double king size jungle it's about as jungly as a jungle can get if you like trees and plants you can't move around them here nature is having the best party it is great time to be bush why because CO2 is not pollution. That's all baloney when they say CO2 is a pollution. It's plant food. Ever heard of photosynthesis? Plants use sunlight and CO2 to build their body. The super abundance of CO2 in the air make it possible for the plants to grow bigger. The earth is so rich in plant life and all the plants are reaching to the top and trying to raise and get more sunlight. So in this period, we're seeing the evolution of the first trees on planet Earth. And who doesn't like trees? When tree dies in our time, they tend to be eaten by microbes and fungi. Guess what? 350 million years before the 21st century, fungi and microscopic creatures haven't evolved to eat wood yet. So the dead tree, hala, gets squashed and buried over time. And over hundreds of millions of years, they will turn into peat and then coal, which will get dug up and fuel the industrial revolution that will transform the world for the better. All those plants and trees are breathing in carbon dioxide. Wanna guess what they breathe out? You guess it right, it's the oxygen. Do you wanna see a willy graph? Of course you do. Here in the Carboniferous Age, the oxygen made up 38% of the atmosphere compared to 21% in our time. Guess who loves oxygen? Yup, the animals do. Unfortunately, in this case, scorpion, millipede, and giant fleas with their amp up respiratory system these animals grew up to super size. The CO2 was good for nature, not just plants and trees, but the animals too. Do you want to see another willy graph? Of course you do. This one shows CO2 level in the Earth's atmosphere 400 million years ago. Levels were through the tree tops, peaking at 4,000 parts per million. Then, around 323 million years ago, carbon dioxide level crashed to as little as 150 parts per million. As CO2 crashed, so did the trees. It was a very bad time to be a bush. If the CO2 has sunk much further, all life on Earth might come to an end. Here's CO2 level from the Carboniferous period to 21st century. In the last very cold glacial maximum on Earth, what we normally call an ice age, they sank to around 180 parts per million. Life threateningly low again. Fortunately, thanks to me and my Ford Bronco Sports, the carbon dioxide level are beginning to rise, but not much. CO2 levels in the atmosphere are still close to being the lowest they have been in the last 200 million years. Sadly, for the trees and ourselves, we're still living in the carbon dioxide starvation period. Look it up yourself. I am Dr. Willie Soon. This is the Bush. And this is Gorilla Science. What do you think of all that? Subscribe to Gorilla Science now. And please donate to help buy more coal for my time machine. Every lump means an extra jump.